Neonatal jaundice is the most prevalent neonatal disease and affects 50 to 60 percent of full-time babies in the first week of life and 80 percent of preterm babies. There are many misconceptions surrounding neonatal jaundice that cause significant concern for parents. However, the presence of neonatal jaundice rarely indicates a significant underlying disease. In severe cases, neonatal jaundice can be associated with hemolytic disease, metabolic and endocrine disorders, anatomic abnormalities of the liver, or infections. These rare cases are commonly associated with risk factors such as fetal maternal blood group incompatibility and liver disease. Infants with multiple risk factors should be monitored closely as these significant underlying problems can result in bilirubin reaching the brain where it may have toxic effects. One risk factor for neonatal jaundice is maternal blood type incompatibility. Maternal blood type incompatibility occurs when the mother of an infant possesses a different blood type from her child. To understand how this works, we have to look at the immune system. The immune system keeps out things that aren't usually found in our body. One way it achieves this is by producing antibodies that can bind to and trigger the destruction of other proteins and cells that do not match with our own. During pregnancy, the antibodies from the mother can seep through the placenta and enter the fetus. This doesn't always pose a huge risk to the child, but in some cases, in which the mother is blood type O and the child is either blood type A, blood type B, or blood type AB, these antibodies can bind to fetal red blood cells and break them down, releasing bilirubin. If enough bilirubin is produced, neonatal jaundice can result. Cord clamping has been under current debate over whether it can play a role in the development of neonatal jaundice. Cord clamping occurs after delivery, usually within the first 60 seconds. Late cord clamping is when the clamping occurs after more than 60 seconds, and the risks and benefits of this practice has been speculated, especially regarding its potential as a risk factor for neonatal jaundice. For example, some studies have found benefits to late cord clamping. It may provide the baby with up to 30% more blood volume and 60% more red blood cells, which provides better blood flow to the organs. Additional iron supplementation, which can lower the chance of anemia during infancy. Conversely, it has also been found that late clamping may be associated with neonatal jaundice. As you can see, there are two contradicting sides to this question. In fact, there are also studies that have concluded that conventional cord clamping and late cord clamping have no impact on the infant's risk of developing neonatal jaundice. The variations between all of these studies are due to differences between the patient populations. Reasons such as geography, differences in study design, and inconsistencies, inconsistencies in the time intervals used can all play a role. This makes it difficult to draw conclusions. Although rare, serious forms of neonatal jaundice can also be caused by underlying pediatric liver malfunctions or diseases. One condition that can occur is biliary attrition, which occurs when bile fails to reach the gut due to either abnormal blockage, narrowing, or destruction of bile ducts. With the incidence of approximately 1 out of 10,000 live births globally, these symptoms manifest in infants 2 to 8 weeks after birth. If left untreated, the disorder is fatal within 2 years. Existing evidence supports a number of possible pathogenic mechanisms that explain how bilarily attrition is caused. Viral infections, genetic mechanisms, and toxic bile acids have all been implicated. However, many aspects of this condition remain unclear. The cause is most likely multifactorial and necessitates further investigation regarding pathogenesis in order to improve our understanding of the disease process. Neonatal jaundice is commonly treated through phototherapy. Phototherapy uses light to lower the concentration of bilirubin by improving its ability to be excreted from the body. During phototherapy, the infant is placed in a chamber that administers light of a certain energy. This light passes through the skin of the infant and chemically reacts with bilirubin molecules. This reaction causes bilirubin to dissolve into the bloodstream and more easily be excreted by the liver. Overall, while there are serious forms of neonatal jaundice, most cases are easily cured.